prime rib may be the most expensive hunk of meat you ever invest in. Surprisingly, preparing it is monastically simple. Our next recipe uses two live fire cooking techniques, smoke tisserie roasting and direct grilling over a wood fire. The wow power is off the charts and the taste is out of this world. I've been spit roasting prime rib as the English do their roast beef for decades. The idea of smoking a prime rib came to me while I was preparing for Project Smoke. The combination of the sanguine beef, the salt, the seasonings, the fat, and the smoke flavor, it's off the charts incredible. This is a whole seven bone prime rib, 22 pounds of proteinaceous pleasure. It comes from a grass-fed steer. Remember, how your food is raised matters as much as how you grill or smoke it. Now, notice I've left a thick sheath of fat. The fat will melt during the roasting process, basting the meat, keeping it moist. I like to keep the seasonings simple. Coarse sea salt, freshly ground black pepper, dried oregano, and hot red pepper flakes. No elaborate marinades, no elaborate rubs. You really want to keep the focus on the beef. So turn your prime rib over and season the back the same way. And don't forget to season the ends. Next, thread the prime rib onto the spit. So find the halfway point between the end of the ribs and the top of the roast and insert the spit. Just run it all the way through the roast. And we'll come through almost to the end. Then place the prongs on the spit. and use them to secure the prime rib. Tighten the lock screw with your finger, then use a fork to secure it in place. Now, place the other set of prongs on the other end of the spit. Insert the prongs into the roast, tighten the lock screw, and again, use a fork to snug it shut. To cook the prime rib, I'm using a Kalamazoo Gaucho grill. It has lots of great features, starting with this flywheel, which raises and lowers above the fire. And this is how you control the heat. Another great feature, a deep firebox with a gas ignition system. All you need to do is pile in the logs and turn a knob and your fire is lit. So position the spit in the holder and then load the other end into the socket and install one of the grilling grates to grill some asparagus. Now rake out the embers so you have a few behind the roast, a few in front, and then embers under the grill for the asparagus. You don't want embers or fire directly under the prime rib. Cooking time for this monster, one and a half to two hours. Just switch on the rotisserie and you're in business. Now let me show you the asparagus. I pinned the stalks into rafts using toothpicks. Drizzle the asparagus with extra virgin olive oil.
and season with coarse sea salt and freshly ground black pepper. Grilling time for the asparagus, a couple minutes per side. Just looking for a little blistering and charring on each side. Check out this prime rib. It looks spectacular. Let's check the internal temperature. You want it to be between 100 and 110 degrees. Now I know this is a bit rarer than most people like their prime rib, but I have a really cool way to finish it. Hey Chris, want to give me a hand getting this off? Thanks Chris. You bet. Chris runs our field kitchen. I'm going to let the prime rib rest for a few minutes while I put the remaining grates on the grill. Now back to the prime rib. Remove the prongs and remove the spit from the prime rib. Now lift up the prime rib and cut it into seven monster steaks. One. That's the biggest steak I've ever seen. And obviously these steaks are gonna be shared by more than one person. So here are your prime rib steaks. The last step is to grill these over a wood fire so you get extra smoke, extra crust. Everybody gets an end cut. Salt and pepper the steaks before they go on the grill. And if the fire gets too hot, raise the grate. This leaves me almost speechless. The wood aroma just coming up right at you. The surface beautifully charred. Take a steak. Now to carve the steak for serving, first carve the meat off the bone, then cut it vertically into slices. The knife glides through this beef like through butter. And don't forget to serve that beautiful bone. Let's see how we did. Hmm, this is amazing. It's tender like prime rib with that primal char of steak. Wood flavor, not overpowering, subtle, but thoroughly infused in the meat. Maybe the best beef I've ever tasted.